Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here. So we have been recently learning about building tile maps. In the last video, I built the program, which you see behind me right now, where we have a character that can walk around a screen larger than the standard MakeCode Arcade screen. We talked about how one of the big benefits of tile maps is being able to create larger worlds. We also talked about making interactive tiles. So here we saw the treasure chests that when I touch, gives me a point. And we also created barriers or walls, so I can't walk through these bushes. So that's just the beginning of the tile map experience. There's a lot more you can do with tile maps. So today we're going to take a different perspective. Um, literally, we're going to be doing a side scroller perspective tile map game. So as always, make sure you're signed in, you see your name or initials or picture up there in the top right corner. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call this project Mario game because I am going to build something in a similar style to the classic Super Mario Brothers. So we are building a platformer or side-scrolling game. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create that. So my first step is I'm just gonna go ahead and start building the world. So if I go to scene and I scroll down to the tile map stuff, I'm gonna set tile map to, and we're gonna go ahead and start building it. So the height, of make code, we know is 120 pixels, but with tiles, we know that to be about eight tiles. So remember we talked about in the last video, 10 by eight is the standard size of the make code screen in the, in the sense of tiles, because each tile, each tile is a hundred, I'm sorry, each tile is 16 pixels wide and 16 pixels tall. So if you're doing 16 pixels wide, um, it, 160 is 10 of those, right? So that's why it's 10 pixels wide. And 120 is actually a little bit less than eight. So we say eight pixels tall, but it's actually a little bit less than that. But this is the closest estimate to the size of the make code screen would be 10 by eight. If I'm building a game like Super Mario Brothers, those games are long. They're not particularly tall usually. Sometimes they are, sometimes they'll have vines that will climb up to a different section of the map that maybe has a little hidden thing. But for the most part, the levels are long. So we're actually gonna keep the height at eight, but I'm going to make the game much longer to fit closer to what I would imagine a Super Mario type game could be. Let's go 50 with it. In fact, I could probably go longer. I don't remember what the maximum is. Let me just see what happens. If I put in 500, okay, so it looks like 255 is the max. So I don't need to go 255 today, but I theoretically could if I wanted to. But let's just go with 50 today. We're going to keep it a nice, relatively small level. But you could go bigger if you wanted to. And we're going to start designing this map, the Super Mario World map. So first thing I want to do is I want to decide what I want my ground to look like. So I'm just going to use one of these rock dirt looking things, and I'm going to make my ground that. Now, of course, remember from the last video, I can uh, create my own tiles if I want to, right? So for now, we'll make that the ground. Now, keep in mind, I don't want my player to fall through the ground, which means that I also need to make these a wall. So I'm going to click on the wall tool and use the bucket fill to make it easier for myself. And now the floor, it will actually act like a floor. The player won't be able to walk through it. They won't fall through it. It will actually act like a floor for the sprites. Okay, so let's just see what else I wanna put in my world here. Let's create some new tiles. And actually, I think in the gallery I saw yesterday, yeah, there it is, there's a brick tile in the gallery. I wanna use this, but I wanna change the color to make it look more like Mario bricks. So we're gonna use the red color for the bricks. Do I wanna keep the part white there or do I wanna change that? I'll leave it white, that looks pretty decent. Okay, so I got these red bricks. Let's put some of these in the world. So we got a couple there, a couple there, maybe put a couple here. I don't know. Uh, maybe at the end, I'll do the little stairs like I do in Mario, right? So I could do something like that. That's actually not too bad. That looks kind of professional. All right, what other tiles do I want to put in my world? I could create clouds or bushes. Here, I'll just create some new ones. 
So fun thing, if you if you never noticed, if you ever look back at the old Super Mario Brothers game, they had bushes that looked pretty ordinary, maybe something like that. I know that's not a great drawing, but the bushes weren't anything too fancy is what I'm trying to say, right? And then they also had clouds in Mario. <laughs> Have you ever noticed how similar the clouds in Super Mario Brothers look to the bushes? If you haven't noticed, you should go take a look because they literally are the exact same thing. So I'm going to duplicate the, the grass and I'm going to edit this one and make it white. And now I have clouds. <laughs> That's literally what they did in Super Mario Brothers. So now I can put some bushes in my world. I can put some clouds in my world. All right, cool beans, cool beans. So I've got the beginning here of a pretty decent looking Mario inspired game, right? Um, oh, I should have some some treasure blocks. So let me create one. I did this in the last video, but we'll do it again. So these will be blocks that the player can hit and get points, right? Oof, that was very sloppy. Hopefully, you're a better artist than I am. All right, so there's our money, our money box. I'll put a couple of these here. I'll put one right there. I'll put one, actually, I'll put two up here. And I'll put one over here by itself. There we go. All right, so we have the beginning of a pretty decent map. Now, as you're building out your tile map, you need to be thinking about what tiles is the player going to be able to walk through and which objects are going to be obstacles or barriers or walls, right? So if we're looking at this map, obviously the character is going to need to be able to walk on the bricks, like the stairs. He needs to walk on those. He needs to be able to walk on these. And he could, should also be able to walk on the coin boxes, right? Because they're actual boxes. So all of those need to be turned into walls. So I need to use my bucket fill tool and my wall tool and go ahead and turn all of those into walls that will allow my player to walk on them or to hit them or interact with them in that way. The bushes and the clouds that I have here, do those need to be walls? No. So tiles can be just for decoration. Just something to think about. Tiles can be just for decoration. They don't have to be interactive. So in this case, the clouds and the bushes are just decoration. We can leave them the way they are. We don't need to make them walls. Okay, so I've got the beginning of a game here. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. So of course the background's black right now. So let's go ahead and change that. Now in the last video, I showed you how you can just throw a color in there and that's absolutely fine. So if I want to go with like a light blue, I can make it look like sky and that's actually not bad, right? We can also use background images, right? So I could also, let's say I wanted to put some mountains in here. I could create some mountains. There we go. Now, do I have to color in the sky? I could. Or, since I already have the background as blue, I could just leave it that way, use both of these. There you go. So I have a tile map, a background image, and a background color. Bet you didn't know you could do that, did you? So yeah, I've, I'm using all three of these right now. The background color is creating the blue sky, the background image is creating the mountains, and the tile map is creating the stuff that the player is going to interact with. All right, so let's go ahead and build out the player. I'll do this part pretty quick, as you guys will have seen this before. I'm using a lot of the same skills that I used when we were doing um, the gravity, because our player will need to have gravity for this game to work correctly. So I've got my sprite. I'm going to give him movement controls. I only want him to be able to walk left and right. So I'm going to turn off his VY and just use X. So now he can move left and right. I need him to have gravity. So I'm going to go ahead and do that the same way. If you remember with the one where we did the dino ball, we put gravity on him as acceleration Y. I'm doing the same thing here. Now, what number to use? I'm not really sure. I'm just going to start with 50 and see how that works. Okay, did you see how that happened there? He fell 
until he hit the floor, then he stopped because the floor is a wall, right? So now I can walk around left and right. Looks pretty good. I'm going to need to put a camera follow on him so I can see the whole map as he walks around. There we go. Yep. Now he can't jump yet because I haven't coded that part. So I'm going to do that similar to how we did it in the Dino Baller lesson. So when I press the A button, we're going to give the player a velocity Y in the negative direction. I'm just putting a random number there. I might change it later. Let's see here. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. There we go. Now he can jump. Although he can't jump very high. I want him to be able to jump up on top of those bricks. So let's make his jumping power a little bit stronger. Um, what about negative 100? Oh, that's too high. Or maybe I need to make gravity stronger. What if I make gravity 100? Oh, that's pretty good. So I gave him a jump power of 100 and gravity 100, and that makes him jump just high enough to get on top of those bricks. Okay, so now we're at a point where I want him to be able to hit the treasure box and get coins. But I want to stick to old school Mario rules. Basically, I only want him to get the coins if he hits it from below. If he jumps on the box from above, I don't want there to get, get any coins, but I do want him to get coins if he hits it from below. So this is obviously using some logic, some conditioning, some if statements, right? So I have to be very particular about how I want those if statements to work. All right, so let's go take a look at the options. If I go into scene and I scroll down to the tile map stuff, these are the logic blocks that I can use, the conditions that I can use that use tile maps. So let's think about how to build this out. If something is true, then I want to get the coin, right? So our options are, if the tile at a location is a particular tile, that sounds pretty promising. If the tile at a location is a wall, okay. If the tile left of Sprite is, now you see how it has a drop down. That means I can change that to other options. And if Sprite is hitting a wall at that side. Okay, I think I have, I think there's a few different things we could go with here. I'm, I like the first one, but I, and I also like this one. So here's what I'm thinking. We have overlap codes here for when a player overlaps with a tile, but he's not going to be overlapping with the treasure box. It's a wall, so he doesn't overlap with it. So that's where we use this one. So this is going to be our, our first piece that we're worried about here. If the player hits a wall at a location. So then we're going to need some logic. If the player hits a wall, there's different walls. We have walls for the ground. We have walls for the bricks. We have walls for the treasure boxes. We need this to distinguish which wall he's hitting, right? So if he's hitting a wall, so that's what the uh, on, on Sprite of Kind player hits a wall. If we're going to want to use one of these two. If I use this, let's just use this to start off with. If the tile at a location, I can use location as a temporary variable. And I could say if the tile at location is treasure box. And I can do something similar to what we did with the treasure chest in the last video. I can have it change images to something else. Uh, maybe it goes to a regular brick. And then it gets a point. So let's see what this does. See how that worked? It worked very well. Here's my problem. I only want it to work when I hit it from below, right? With this code, it will also work if I hit it from above. You guys seeing that? It will also work if I hit it from the side. So it does work, but it doesn't limit me as much as I wanted it to, right? So this is actually a good code if I wasn't going to be super picky about how I wanted my program to work. This is a good code. So it says basically anytime I hit a wall, at a location, if the wall at that location is the treasure box, then get one point and change it to a different block. That works really good. But if I want to get pickier about it, I'm going to want to use a 
this as well. Because I only want it to work if it's the tile on top of my sprite. So what I think I'm going to need to do here is I think I'm going to need an and. Because I really want it to work only when both these things are true. If the wall is the treasure box and if that treasure box is this, right? So let's use the and here. Put that in there. So if the tile at the location is the treasure box and it's the tile above the player. So both those need to be true. I think this will work. Let's try it. So if I walk on top of this treasure box, nothing should happen. Ha ha, nothing happens. If I fall on it, nothing happens. If I hit it from below, booyah, there we go. It works. Cool, 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 cool. It works pretty well. And now I've got the beginning of a pretty decent little Mario game here. All right, I like this. I like this a lot. Anything else we want to do in this video before I end it? Um, you could if you wanted to, if you want to get creative with it, you could have other stuff happen here. For instance, in the original Mario, whenever he breaks a brick or, or does something like this, he always changes his picture to have his hand up in the air. So if you wanted to, you could do something like that too, right? Put an animation in here if you wanted to. So maybe something happens to the treasure box. Maybe um, a little coin pops out above its head. You could create a little coin projectile if you wanted to. So there's a lot of stuff you could do with this. You can get kind of creative with it. Have fun with it. I'll go ahead and stop the video here because I feel like I gave you a good starter. So I'd like you to go ahead and keep on building out your level. Make it as big as you want to. Um, add fun stuff. Have some blocks that are interactive, some blocks that aren't, right? Um, you could add enemies. Ooh, this is a good challenge for you if you feel like being challenged. What would happen if you added some enemy sprites? Could you create an overlap code similar to what we did here with the treasure box? Could you create an overlap code so that when the player hits the enemy, they would either lose their health or they would kill the enemy, depending on how they touch them? Because in the original Mario game, if you think about it, if Mario hit an enemy from the side, Mario would die. But if Mario jumped and landed on the enemy, it would kill the enemy. And they did that with a logic block very similar to what we used here. Do you think you could create something like that? I'd love to see you try. All right. So keep building your Mario world and show me what you make. Put the link. Click on this button. Name your program. Share the project. Copy the link. Put it in the comments. I want to see it. I want to check it out. So if you learned something new today, as always, please click like on this video. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about this channel so that they can come build fun games too. All right. Um, in the next video, I think I'm probably going to teach you guys how to build additional levels. So stick around, and I will see you next time.